Hey guys, Dyson Heppel here from the SNM Footy Club. I'm here on the Fitness and Lifestyle Podcast. We're talking a mixed bag of stuff here, but primarily about trying to live your best life and just loving it. Let's get into it. Yo. Welcome to the Fitness and Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Kennedy, and I'm here to help you become the very best version of yourself. Brother, absolute pleasure to have you back on the pod in the studio. Um, I don't think, yeah, we haven't done an episode together here, but mate, welcome to the welcome to the Fitness and Lifestyle Podcast. DK, thanks so much, mate. This is awesome. I think it's might be our third, maybe together, but yep. certainly not in a space like this. And <laughs> no, um, I think the first few have been some fucking outrageous little setups. I reckon the first one was yeah. the one mic between two. Second one might have been on Zoom. Zoom, yep. But here yeah. we are. No, here we are, man. It's been great. And I think, um, no, very, very grateful for you, mate. I think, you know, our, our relationship's grown a hell of a lot over those years as well. And mm. um, and even just following uh, your journey and listening to all the pods um, has been amazing. Got so much, you know, nuggets of, of wisdom out of it and um, really starting to implement a, lo- a lot of what, you know, we've been talking about together and excited to, to dive into that today. Appreciate that a lot, man. Um, as I've expressed to you a number of times, very grateful for our friendship and the the um, the connection that we've had, particularly over the last probably twelve months or so. But a bit of backstory, I guess, for the for the listeners or those that are watching at the moment. Um, Dice and I first kind of connected, or we first met back in probably under fourteens or sixteens through some Vic Country basketball stuff, I believe. Yeah, true. At the time, you were just a fucking weapon and and dominating, and I was just trying to hang on and just creep into the to the selection process but um and then you got drafted i moved to melbourne and then i think somehow we managed to connect again through socials yeah through some content or something and then um we we did a couple of off seasons together um and it just stayed connected on and off basically since then but particularly over the last yeah, I'd say one to two years. We, we started catching up a lot for coffee or lunch, whatever, and the conversations just gradually started creeping back towards a lot of mindset stuff. Um, not even like intentionally. It was just us both talking through our own journey and, and yep. what we were going through, which is which is what I enjoy most about it. Um, and then particularly at the beginning of this year, it started to, to shift a little bit further in terms of some more specifics around the mindset stuff. But... I'm I'm interested to hear how much this like how different this year has been for you in terms of like a a general just feeling around life and, yeah. and feeling's probably a good way to put it True. in comparison to all of your other years as a professional athlete and, and being, you know, the face of, of the Essendon Footy Club as well. Yeah, yeah, great call. I think um I think it, it probably coincided, um, particularly around footy in general, coincided with uh, handing over the captaincy to, mm-hmm. to Zachy Merritt, um, something that I was, I was ready for, something that he was ready for to take over the role. And I probably didn't realise the subconscious weight that I was holding um, with, with being the skipper. Yeah. And held the role for six years. Um, absolutely loved it and a tremendous honour. Uh, but at the same time, it came with a lot of baggage and a lot of um, you know stressful times. Um, but... At, the, at the, the same time, it's those periods that I went through that helped me grow a hell of a lot and I think got me to a point where the start of last year I was of this season just gone. I was in a space of where I just wanted to get as, as much enjoyment out of my footy as I possibly can. Mm. And this is probably where we came um, you know, a lot, a lot closer with our journey was like, I don't know, we, we've always been you know, close and similar values and just chewing the fat and bouncing yeah. ideas off each other. But I think a lot of the stuff we'd been talking about had really started to resonate. Mm. Um, you know, things about just just how, how good can life get and, and not just around how good can my football be, but flowing that into other areas of my life as well. So mm. what I found when I sort of took myself out of just the footy environment and getting better in that space and just – you know, sort of relaxing a bit and being like, all right, how good can can my just general life and day-to-day be? How, how good of a space and feeling can I be in? Um, how deep can my conversations be with, you know, friends, family, yeah. things like that? For um, no particular reason too. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. And, it. and sort of found I got myself in a nice little flow. Um, things that used to worry me and, and I'd get stressed about sort of just 
dissipated and mm-hmm. it wasn't really a thing anymore um, and just got a lot of joy out of my footy and, and being around my teammates and helping others grow and improve and um, you know not to say it didn't come with it, its worries and doubts and stress along the way but I was able to cope and handle um, with those situations a hell of a lot easier so yeah. I would imagine there's a lot of other athletes out there I have absolutely no doubt a lot of other athletes out there that are in a really po- uh, positive headspace. They're they're dedicated to mastering their craft and becoming the best athlete possible, um, and getting the most out of their career, right? And I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that was like the the headspace that you're in. I feel like from the outside in, you are you know an absolute professional, and, and you know the way you carry yourself in and out of the club is that of of a professional, right? It's like textbook professional. But I would imagine when you live life like that, it gets to a point where everything, as you said, revolves around football. And even when you're not in at the club, mm. everything kind of, there's this, it's not a heaviness, but there's there's this bit of your brain that's always switched on towards football. So even in social settings or, you know, I know we've had conversations around even being able to relax on a holiday or, yeah. or time off and stuff like that. So would you be able to give some insight into some of, those i guess i guess you could say struggles over your career in terms of you know even things around like the nutrition and training side of stuff just coming into the league but yeah whether it be having a a few mistakes in a game that you then kind of dwell on for a few days after like what was that like for you and can you give some just give us some insight into what those experiences were like yeah great shout i think i think i've always had sort of this um optimistic um energetic personality yeah but uh, at the same time, I've got this real hunger and desire and, and it, you know, I, I just wanted to be the best when I was young. Mm. Um, and, you know, coming into the league, it, probably the, a lot of those characteristics helped me in great stead, that competitiveness, you know, wanting to, to you know, be the best I possibly could be. But, um, yeah, what came with that was nearly an ob- obsession of, um, you know, my, my recovery, my, my professionalism, as you say. Um, and it probably got to a point in my, I finished my first year and, and, you know, played every game. I'd rise yeah. and star. I'd, you know, my idol growing up was my coach. You yeah. know, I was like, this is unreal. Played yeah. for the team I barrack for. Um, and just an unbelievable start to my career. And, um, you know, it, it, then I probably got to that point where I started to feel a bit of the weight of, all right, let's go again in my second year and mm. tried to dive into what I could do to get better. And, and then part of that was my diet and nutrition what i thought i knew but i actually had no idea so i nearly got myself in a, a bit of a, a hole of an eating, eating disorder um mm-hmm. you know i wasn't consuming anywhere near an, enough calories mm-hmm. um you know i wouldn't even put sauces or salt or anything on on my protein like yeah. i just have it as clean as possible without the carbs so yeah. i was lacking the energy they wanted me to put on weight but to keep my skin folds low so i was in this thing of like all right well i can't eat too much but so I, yeah i was i was bringing my own things to like my own pre-prep food to you know social outings i'd if i was going to watch a game of footy or something i'd bring my own food from home yeah okay. you know i was really strict on the amount of beers i was like i just went in this real obsessive mindset mm-hmm. um to to my detriment and it, i have no doubt it led to a few um niggles in my body yeah um that were sort of ongoing for a period of time and then mm-hmm. that's probably where i dived into a lot of your stuff where yep. we you know had a proper chat around flexible dieting and making sure that it's it's you know you really you can eat what you want yeah but at that time you got me to track my macros and my micros as long as i was hitting my targets throughout those days yeah and i got i found a much healthier balance with my diet my nutrition my food intake and then you know uh, the rest flowed from there where i started to tried to relax a bit more around what i was doing and not mm. being so obsessive yes being professional but you know I, I learned so much through that little period about how being too obsessive about something can take you away from what you are what you're trying to achieve so and it yeah. sucks particularly the food side of things it becomes such an emotional thing yeah yeah because we've obviously spoken about and i've mentioned on the show how i was in a very similar position prior to that and that's how i then kind of was able to share the experiences with people like yourself and with anyone who's consumed my content of yeah. like removing like the emotion around fucking nutrition right yeah. and i think um you raised a point before about particularly in a sporting environment especially as a younger athlete as you said, you, you're motivated to be the best. You might have just started it in at the club or, and this can even apply to an amateur level as well, but you're trying to impress and everything. And 
you want the low skin folds, but you got to put on some weight. And then you've got one person saying, you know, you need low skinnies. The other person saying you need to gain some muscle mass. And it's like, well, fuck, what do I do here? I think that is a bit of a problem too in sport is that there is such an obsession around staying lean. Yes. But then at the same time, as you said, you're not consuming carbohydrates, but then you're on track for three, four hours a day in preseason, yep. expending a shit ton of energy. Yep. So not only are you not gaining muscle, you know, you're not even providing your body with the fuel it needs to recover and repair and perform yep. at its absolute best. But when you are able to zoom out and take the emotion out of the food side of things in particular, mm. and as I've spoken about on here before, start to look at it for what it is. It's a numbers game realistically, yep. right? Yep. It just gives you this such a liberating feeling of just removing this heaviness around fixating on fucking every second of the day about all right what what am i eating next or yeah. do i feel bad for eating this or yeah. do i need to go and do some extra exercise now because i had this and it's just guaranteed. a head fuck. guaranteed yeah and and you know it took me a long time to get to that point to really grasp it and relax with it yeah you know i'm still i'm still trying to eat healthy yeah I'm of conscious course, of yeah. what i'm eating but it's you know i feel like i'm in a space where it's i've got a really good balance around it and then that same mindset i tried to flow into other areas as well like you can't there's a point where you can overdo recovery for your body you know <laughs> what i mean and and take you know you you don't want to go to a social event because you'd rather be sitting at home in your norma tech boots or yeah. going to the sauna and doing hot colds or something Sleeping like in the that. ice bath or something exactly like. and it, it <laughs> <laughs> doing some rogue shit i've done plenty of rogue shit over my career mate um, but yeah, I think that just helped sort of foster a mindset of um, just that it's hard to say a healthy balance because it's not really in professional sport as an athlete. It's sort of hard to have a balance, but at the same time, just relax a bit with it all mm. and more, more so, you know, hold, hold things a bit more lightly and mm. just, yeah. you know, and to find those things that actually have a real impact. And a lot of the things that have a real impact are pure like relaxation, having fun, yes. great conversation. Um, and just doing things that you love, yep. you know, and as we found now, like when, when I'm in that space of doing things that I love, I'm happy. I'm in, I'm in, a, in a high vibration, as yes. we say, or high frequency, my body feels good. I'm able to let that stagnant sort of ruminating thought and energy just roll through me and pass through me. Yep. Um, and, and nothing seems to phase you too much and you build that momentum as you go. Yeah, you do build that momentum. And even we were on the phone yesterday afternoon talking about the frequency side of things when, and I've said it on the show, when you feel good, you attract more good things. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily need to be for anything specific, right? Sure. And we've had this conversation throughout the season around prior to the game, like what you should be focusing on coming into a game. Is it is it fixating on all the minor little details of, of playing the game, which you obviously are so good at playing and you've practiced so much previously that the hour before is going to do fuck all of yeah what your performance is or is it coming into game day just genuinely excited to be there grateful to be there enjoying every moment of it and i think everyone listening at the moment regardless of whether you play sport or not you know that when you feel good yes everything flows no doubt. so you might be excited and 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 feeling happy or up and about after watching some fucking stand-up comedy and then all of a sudden you go and have a conversation with a friend or you go and do some work and it just feels better and it flows yeah, better because yeah, yeah. you haven't got that that fixation or that contracted type of energy. But uh, I'm interested, interested to hear um, one thing you said before is around enjoying everything outside of sport as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've spoken to me about it, uh, the importance, and this goes for all athletes, of understanding that, you know, you may have been, you know, the, the captain of the Essendon Football Club in the AFL, the team that you barrack for growing up and as you said being coached by the absolute hero or whatever but in the end of the day that's something that you do that's not who you are yes so how is that i guess transformation for you in starting to understand that or, or make that shift from thinking of yourself 24 7 as this afl professional athlete to mm. then starting to grasp all right afl and football is something that i do yeah. But without it, I am still, you know, I'm still an incredible human or, you know, I'm, I'm still living this human experience outside of sport. And when I can understand that, everything starts to to all collectively feel quite good. So yes. was that something that you struggled with with at some point? Yeah, guaranteed. Like I feel like that's that's a lot of the, the work that, that we've done around around the inner work has led to that point where my whole identity isn't wrapped up in me as the footballer and so definitely something I've struggled with over my yeah. career. It was like, it's, I, I lived and breathed it, you know, the footy as from, from 18 to probably, 
you know, what am I now, 31, 32, it's sort of till you know, around the age of even 28, 29, I was still wrapping my identity in, in mm. f- me as the footballer and try to, you know, you obviously hear the expressions of don't don't identify yourself and, and wrap everything up in in you as the footballer. But And I'd go, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah but no, at the no, same yeah, yeah. time, like I, I was just obsessed with the game and, and trying to get as much out of it as I possibly could and help others grow and learn and develop along the pathway as well. But... Um, you know, the, the weight of it at all at times would, would sort of consume you. And, yep. um, you know, if things weren't going as well as you'd like, if I had, I had a number of, you know, long, long-term long injuries with my feet mm. um, that took a while to get right and I wasn't on the park being able to play and perform and, and do what I love, that's when it sort of really started to trigger, all right, I've got to do a lot of work here around getting into a space where no matter what's going on in my external environment, I can still sit here at peace with mm. who I am knowing that I'm worthy no matter what, yeah. you know, not because I'm, I'm not getting pumped up for playing well on the weekend or, yeah. you know, kicks marks. You're and not handball. getting that gratification from, that's yeah, right. as you, you said, that need, external validation. Yes. You don't need that external validation. And if you can get to a point where you sit there really content within yourself and who you are and who you're being rather than what you do, mm. um, it's a liberating, really free, um, free feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like part of that or a big part of that is, is just the the basic, you know, understanding of focusing on what you can control as well. Yeah. I think part of that, you know, you mentioned the injury side of things, even myself, like um, years ago, that was massive for me, whether it was when I was still playing basketball or even just my my fitness or my go going to the gym. If I was injured, it'd do my fucking head in and, <laughs> and I'd be fixated on what I couldn't do. Yeah. Or, or how much progress I was losing or what I wish I would be could do even though I couldn't do it at the time yeah and that is just completely wasted energy yeah it's a classic and you end up bringing yourself into that hole I think that's a big thing yeah. is that you start to realize that a lot of the and he supplies for a lot of stress and anxiety or, or frustration we end up we actually just do it to ourselves true true yeah it's, it's a wild. classic isn't it it's like you know just a, a thought then was like early in my career had a I had two major foot injuries over my career, one in 2012, 13, the other being, you know, more, more of late last, last few years. The early one was all focused around how much extra could I do even straight after surgery, wheeled out of the hospital, what can I be doing? I'd be doing, I'd be doing core exercises. I'd be doing, as soon as I could get on the bike, absolutely flogging myself. Yep get to a stage later in my career where I've learned all uh, learned so much and get to a space where it's like, okay, what does my body need? And a lot of that is around purely relaxing, getting myself in a really good space, eating the right foods to be able to allow my body to heal and recover. Cause uh, you know, you've been, you've got plate and screws put in your foot. Mm. Your body needs to use a lot of that energy to direct it towards healing. Yes. And if I'm doing so many extras and, you know, smashing mm. myself in the pool and cross training and all of that, at the same time, getting so caught up in my own head using mental. mental energy and emotional energy, it's really slowing down the healing process and yeah. it was detrimental. So, And you start um, to go, oh, fuck, maybe there's a reason why they said to rest for eight it. weeks. Yeah, that's it. So not I've eight got, days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. It's like, yeah, and it, 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 it takes time. You, I feel like I had to go through all that to be able to that, get to that point where the proof's in the pudding, yes. you know, to be able to heal a lot quicker. And Yeah. Um, yeah. Mate, that's a really good point you just raised is having to go through certain experiences and, and you get to this understanding as well of like you, we talk about all the time, you know, everything happening for a reason or, yeah. you know, once you understand, you know, the outcome that you want or the direction you're trying to go in that you just kind of step back and allow things to happen. So when something doesn't go the way that you expect it to or the way that you wanted it to, mm. we can either fixate on that and be and try and be in this controlling energy of of thinking that, you know, we know how everything should go yeah. or then pulling yourself out of it and just understanding that, all right, this happened. There's a reason for it. And yes. if it didn't go the way I wanted it to go, then it just means that something better's on the way or there's a reason why it went this way, what lessons can be taken from it, yeah. which is a hard thing to ha- wrap your head around. And I think even now, you know, I just mentioned, like you said, you need to be ready to receive a lot of this information. Yeah. Yeah. And so do you feel like some of the the lessons or some of the shifts that you've had in the last, say, 12 months 
do you feel like you would have been able to apply them even if you had the same understanding back when you were playing in those first couple of years when you when your actual mindset around trying to build a career instead yes. of looking back now and and knowing that you have yeah do you feel like you would have been able to apply it then like, like as you say you need to be ready and in a space to be able to integrate everything that you're learning mm. and like I look at it now and go, no way. You yeah. know, I definitely didn't have the emotional maturity. Mm. I hadn't had the experiences that I had to be able to grasp any of these concepts. Mm -hmm. You know, even around, I, I, I had been inquisitive and, and curious about meditation and always trying to, you know, develop myself from a mental perspective. Um, but that was always, a bit, it was like mental strength. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, you know, it was like that rather than a a, a surrendering and, and letting go to the flow of life and knowing that things happen for a reason. Life yep. happens for you, mm. not to you, you know, like, yeah. it's, and that can be a weird concept, but, you know, I love weird shit. And we've, <laughs> yeah. you know, I've been, you know, we've, we've, we've delved into some, you know, more eccentric type stuff, yes. but of late those those core principles over the last sort of 12 18 months have really started to land and integrate and i'm starting to live that rather than just have it and have the knowledge and have it as a concept um, yeah it's been really cool and, and, and a big one is around that just full being out to surrender to whatever is happening in that environment not getting so attached to an outcome or an achievement or something that you're trying to pursue mm -hmm. sort of like putting that intention out there yeah that that's something that you want to want to go for mm -hmm. um but at the same time it's like surrender to it and allow the universe to don't worry about the how and the when yes you know just let that go and 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 try and just sit at peace with knowing that it'll eventuate in due course yeah man yeah. i fucking love that and I think a big part of this for people listening as well is that there can often be a bit of a misconception when when you start to talk about things like the law of attraction or even what you said just then, you're placing the intention, you're not worried about the how or the when. There can be a bit of a misconception that you just, oh, it's almost like fucking lazy or you don't give a fuck, but yeah. it's actually the exact, exact opposite. Yep. Even though we're not forcing an outcome, we are deeply attached to the, to the direction or to the intention. Yes. But we're just not attached to the to the how or the when yep. and I think you're like just such a perfect example right it's like you've applied a lot of these principles but you know even if we look at your last season you played fucking great football and as I said at the start you're one of the most professional people I've ever come across so none of that has to change it doesn't mean that your level of discipline or dedication or, or motivation towards being the best athlete or the best fucking businessman or the best partner or whatever it is doesn't mean any of that diminishes whatsoever yeah it's actually, you know, if anything, even higher than whatever it was before, but you just don't have all that extra baggage and resistance that Absolutely. comes with it. Absolutely, mate. And that's it. And, 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 and the big one is when, when you get to that point of the desire that you want, when you get there, if you're, you know, you can force your way there through just a willingness and a want and whatever, you can get there. Mm. But when you get there, the, the satisfaction is not is not as great as what it could be or the experience the journey is not you, you haven't fully lived it you know it's not yeah. a an enjoyable experience at times exactly right you know but when you're in a space of like just freedom and having fun and and you've got so much joy and passion towards where you're heading mm -hmm. but you're not so attached and grinding out to get there that along the way you're just having fun you know it's great and when you get there you go shit that's like that's the feeling that you want and then you can fully you know, just immerse yourself in those, you know, in that, in that journey along the way, yeah. rather than just being like, right, oh, then what's next? Bang. Yeah. You know, it's exactly. sort of a, yeah, just the, the, the general feeling and a way of being that can be so fulfilling rather than just sit heavy with, um, you know, those outcomes that you're trying to achieve. If that Anticipation makes sense. of it. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and that was one of the, one of the first, I guess, proper sessions that you and I did before the season began even, or it might've been a couple of rounds into the season, um, was around that. One of the first things I said to you was, is all right, what's the, what's the outcome that, that would bring you the most joy? And we sat there and we went through it. And I think at the time it was something around, most likely around a premiership or something like that. And, and one of the first questions I asked you was, all right, what, what emotions or what feelings or what experiences do you feel like would be attached with that? Yeah. 
and you, know, and you listed them all out and, and we sat there and chatted through them. And the question I then gave to you was, all right, well, how can you feel those things like as of right now? Yeah. This, this weekend in round three when we're playing against fucking North Melbourne or whoever it is, yep. like how can you feel those things now? Because the only reason we ever want anything, an outcome or a materialistic thing, the relationship, the money, whatever, is because of how we think we'll feel when we have yes, it. And yeah. as you said just before, sometimes when you achieve it, mm. it doesn't feel the way you thought it was. So then you go to yourself, fuck, I've just made this a living hell for the last few years to get this result and it hasn't changed the way I feel. Yeah. So... When you were able to make that shift to focusing on feeling those emotions and those experiences just now, yeah, before it's even happened, and, and regardless of whether there's a premiership there or not, or whatever that intention is, what shift did you see in terms of just enjoyment throughout the week, and and then obviously how that you know relayed onto your you know your form, like yep, true. In, playing throughout the year, yeah, no, and and that was it. It was like okay, embodying the type of feelings that would occur in in a big game or in you know winning a premiership or whatever it is it was like as we said we i, I wrote them all down and then just tried to have those experiences throughout my week even though it was early in the season or in pre-season was mm -hmm. like that just that real feeling of okay the excitement of it all and and the joy and the gratitude around footy mm -hmm. uh, the love for our fans and our members yeah um you know and it, it i've always tried to get around the fans that come out to training and um you know i just found i connected a hell of a lot better with those with those people um you know even just sitting relaxing when i got to the game because it was like okay I don't need to be so regimented in everything I'm doing. It turned into like, all right, can I just go and have a yarn with a kid on the boundary? Yeah. Can I sign a few autographs and make someone's day? Yeah. Um, and then even post game, you know, getting around the fans, mm. in, you know, just interacting more with them and giving them a, more of a, you know, greater experience of coming to the footy. Mm. Um, and just like, uh, it just, I just got so much joy out of it. You know, the, the one, the growth throughout the week, everything I was learning, I was able to come out of myself more and help my teammates a hell of a lot more. I think my leadership went to a new level. Mm. Um, and then, you know, performances took care of itself, but that came back from, um, you know, embodying the, the type of feelings that I wanted um, from playing the game and the, the joy I got out of it. Yeah. That's fucking awesome, man. What were some of the things that you've used, um, like the tools that you've used in order to, to continue to elevate that that frequency and stuff, I know obviously um, you're you're a big fan of the Breath House in there with Ella. Um, oh, yeah. We both are. It's fucking incredible in there. And anyone who's listening or watching that hasn't been down to the Breath House in Melbourne, definitely um, get down there. But did you find there were certain things that would allow you to be in that frequency? Yeah, I've talked about it before. Even if it's things like watching some comedy or going mm. for a walk with the dogs, or you know, going out for a coffee with Kate or something like that. Like, what what have you found really allows you to get into that good space? Yeah, nice. And 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 they're the, they're the key ones of finding like the things just in your day to day that just just lift you up, just mm. give you you know a lot of energy and joy. Um, and they they are things like going for a dip in the beach. You know, walking the dogs with Kate, going for a coffee, catching up with mates, even just calling them, yep. um, things like that. But um, I, I make sure that I try and start my day um, off really well with a great morning routine. I like to get up, I get up pretty early. I sort of wake up at quarter to six. Um, I'll meditate and then integrating more breath work now. Um, and then I've set up a, a chest freezer in the backyard as my ice bath. So I'll go and jump in the chesty or the beach for, for five minutes and then... Um, got a little outdoor shower, smash a shower, and then have a nice, easy sort of lead into my day from, from getting up early. I don't, I don't feel like I need a rush. Um, it's just nice and cruisy, and Kate and I will have a cook up um, before we uh, crack into our day. But I feel like that gets me in a really good space mm. um, and a really good sort of high, high vibe to be able to just enjoy my day yep. um, and handle sort of anything that, that gets thrown at me, yeah. You did a uh, you did an incredible job and and it was a fucking tough gig from the outside in anyway being the leader of the football club you know as your time as captain since stepping away from the captaincy has your has your understanding or I guess your view of leadership changed in any way mm, that's a great question um I think when I was you know I was pretty young and raw when I took over the the role from Joe but 24 yep um and 
you know, I, I could say now that I would have done things differently, but I don't think so because that's where I was at in my stage of my yeah. career. And, um, you know, I found that there were probably elements where I was like, all right, I came off an incredible leader in, in Job and try, probably tried to copy some yeah. of the things he did, but it was more so grabbing the, the good things that I loved about the way he went about it and learned so much. And then I quickly found my feet to be my, my own authentic self with, with being the captain. Um, but probably... I sit in now and go the the way that I led. I probably didn't have to hold on to the the stress and the weight of it all at times. Mm -hmm. um, if I had have known what I do do now, yeah, um, I would have been able to let a lot of the um, I guess the the pressures and the and the worries go a hell of a lot easier. Um, yeah. To therefore be in a better space to be able to lead and guide and, and help yeah. uh, my teammates as well. So, but yeah, what I quick I, I quickly learned was I needed to make sure that. I took care of myself first before I could give to others. Yes. Um, because you know, if the the energy that that I'm or who I'm being will, I'll get a d direct reflection of that. So yeah. You know, I didn't know that then, but if I was, you know, in a, made sure I got in a really healthy, you know, vibrant space, mm. then that had a hell hell of a lot better impact on my teammates rather than, you know, coming in and just trying to grit through it and that I'd be re receiving that back, that negativity or that heaviness, you know. Yeah. Have you? Since Zaki's uh, stepped in as captain now, um, do you do you offer advice or guidance, or do you kind of let him experience that journey for himself? He's he. Uh, I don't reckon anyone's done any more work on themselves in terms of a leader than Zaki. So yeah. he's, you know, he's got himself into a space where he doesn't need a lot of guidance. He's re he's ready to go and, and <laughs> did an incredible job last year. Um, but he was someone that I bounced ideas off for my entire career. Yeah. Um, so he's uh you know he's been my little right hand man in terms of a leader as well. Um, so look, I, honestly, he did not need much guidance at all last year, and I, I obviously always there for him. Yeah. Um, and and doing my bit in the background, but uh, it's more so just let him let him go, let him spread his wings and and do his thing and create this you know new environment, new coach, new captain, mm. um, new boys within the club, and and you know see where we can take it. That's awesome. I love that. If you don't mind me um, talking about this, um, one of the the things that you and I focused on a lot throughout this season just been was coming into the to the year, but even throughout the season. Obviously, your your current contract at the time was was ending, and there wasn't uh, it didn't have a definitive answer yet as to whether or not you were going to be contracted coming into this year. And I think obviously everyone the whole time had the uh, very clear idea of the fact that. Clearly, we thought you were going to be signed on again anyway, but there's still that bit of, um, I guess, uncertainty there. Yeah. And we worked on it quite a lot in terms of staying at the frequency of just a knowing of, of if I continue to focus on the things that I can control and stay aligned with, then then the rest will, will be what it will be type of thing. Yeah. But I'm just interested to hear, um, you know, hear from you now, like how did you – find that experience this year and and what really helped you al allow you to kind of just not fixate on that and let that get to you to the point where you're starting to try and force things again in the game and and you know I guess I don't know how I'm trying to word this like how how was that experience for yeah. you and, and how do you feel like you dealt with it this year to the point where you did end up having such a great year and then it made it very easy for them to quite clearly sign you on again yeah nice it was um you know I think for the first time end of season isn't end of season 2022 was the first time I'd you know had to experience um the position where it was like okay I needed to make a choice I had you know for in my career I'd had long-term deals so yeah. I'd signed a fiver I'd signed maybe four another couple so that was all I had to go through but mm -hmm. then now it's in a later stage of my career and things are shifting and changing within the club new coaches mm -hmm. you got and and the the uh, end of 2022 was um, there's an opportunity to to go and play for the Gold Coast. Yeah. Um. You know, and that was a, a big period where it was weighty. It was quite stressful. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, there was a lot of I wouldn't say turmoil, but there was a lot going on within the footy club. Yeah. Restructuring from a board level to coaches, um, and the like. So, um, that was a big big decision and a big part of my you know my life there with with Kate and as well. Um, but. In the end, that was probably a heaviness and I was so glad that I stayed um, with the Bombers mm. but probably didn't feel I handled that one all that well in terms of just the oh, the sheer just energy and negativity yep. that I felt towards it. Mm -hmm. um, 
but then coming out of contract the end of this year, I had the, the one-year deal. Um, and then I feel like I was in a much better space to be able to um, just let it be. As, as you say, it was like, it, it, and no doubt it was like on my mind. Yeah. Um, because I got to a point where I really wanted to play on again. I was, mm. I was just loving it. I was like, this is great. I mean, I'm in a new space. The the boys, the character of the playing group, aren't playing under Scotty, who's a gun, mm. um, and I've loved I've loved playing under him. Um, and I feel like there's just great stability at the club, and I want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and to you know, when I got to that point of I want to play again, I probably got went up the path of attaching myself to that yeah. real want and need, yeah. um, and forcing it. And then that was when we went through that period of like just chill, like yeah. just like. Yes, you've put the intention out there that you want to play again, and I, mm. I let them know that. I let yep. the club know that, so I did everything I could to to make sure we were clear there. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was like, all right, let's just keep focusing on on what, how I want to feel, how yeah. I want to, you know, just react around that environment. And um, and I and you know, at times you can see when you're talking to um, recruiters or list managers and stuff, it can be quite a bit of animosity there between the two because yep. you know they they want what's best for the club you know you're trying to take care of your own backyard with your management as, and that as well yeah um, but i sort of really just surrendered to all that and found that navigated that um scenario as best i possibly could and felt really good about it and was in the end was super grateful to, towards the club where um it was they let they left it up to me to make the, the decision on whether i wanted to roll on again so probably best case scenario in the end, which was unbelievable and, mm. and so excited to be to be rolling around again this year, yeah. That's awesome, man. It's fucking incredible. And even uh, I think, um, again, happy to hear, uh, keen to hear your opinion on this, but we spoke prior to the season even starting, like how much of an impact it can have in when we talk about like frequency and, and just genuine embodiment, like – just the language you're using, your 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 thoughts, the um, you know your actions, like your communication with other people around, like the narrative that you're creating for yourself. Yes. So you know you mentioned you know you just clicked over thirty at that point, and within the the AFL media, like fucking thirty may as well be sixty years old <laughs> the way they talk about it. But it's like you can very you can see how very easily when we talk about like limiting beliefs and stuff, you can see how very quickly when you've got people saying stuff in the media, if you've got yourself and your friends and your family and stuff talking about you're getting the back end of the career or getting old now and and then you're starting to do things and think things that you wouldn't have done a year before when you're in your 20s, yeah. how that can then you know manifest itself into reality to the point where a year or two down the track, you actually are yep. starting to feel like you're at the end of your career. But the massive shift that I saw in you yeah. and the intention from you was like, fuck that like that's it. i'm telling the club that look i have no intention of wrapping things up anytime soon yeah um you know i'm gonna have the best pre-season i have no reason why i can't have my best year football wise this year as well mm. um, i'm gonna take care of my recovery i'm gonna enjoy every part of it and when you change all of that language and the thoughts that manifesting that's the reflection that you get in your reality as well yeah it's that's wild it. how powerful it is it is man. and it's that's it like you create your own own reality and it's the the story that you tell yourself is what comes to fruition and if mm. you buy into that that external noise and the the narrative that comes from the outside then no doubt that 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 will occur you know like yeah. the the idea of you know even coaches saying look mate you, you just can't do what you used to be able to do you know what I mean? Like saying yeah. things like that. And if I really, you know, in, embrace it and was like, yeah, you're right, you know, I'm, 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 I'm about dust here, you know, my body will absolutely just shut down on me and that, that'll, be, that'll be curtains. Yes. Um, but it was sort of reframing and reshaving going, hang on, why, why do I have to believe that? You know, why, why should that be the case? Mm. Um, and it was, and it, then it was like, yeah, can I just get into a space where it's like, why can't I play the best footy of my career in my in my thirties? You know, why can't I have the most fun as I possibly can with my footy at this stage of my career? And um, just sort of started to create a different, um, you know, a different language and a different story behind different it. Narrative, yeah. yeah, different narrative to to bring to life. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. It's just such powerful stuff. And you know, I say this to you every fucking week, I reckon. But like every time we catch up for a chat, I absolutely love it because you just you start to 
yeah, such a high, high vibe, high frequency conversation. But you, it's one thing that I've found recently is that if you can just start to ask yourself more questions, and, and what I mean by that is, you might you might have a, a resentment towards a certain person or a reaction to a certain person that just automatically happens and you never think to question it and you you place all this narrative or this story on that person and then one day you go to yourself what why do i have that reaction or like why do i even think this way about them yeah and then you can almost always trace it back to something within yourself sure yeah and if it's a limiting belief and yeah. you're telling yourself this story all the time and then you just ask yourself the question it's like is this even true true yeah. and if the more questions you can start to ask yourself it's like you can change. You can reframe the way that you think, and that, you know, ultimately changes your reality in a really fucking short period of time. Yeah, and you start to understand how powerful, like, just a, such a simple process like that is. Mm, that's it. That's it. And it sort of, it it sounds it sounds very simple, but it's taken like a long time to grasp. But I think being able to with our conversations, if something lands, like I'll often just like ring you straight away or like messenger yeah, or something yeah, yeah. so it's like it's nearly like talking through it has really helped integrate it mm. you know and the more that we have just spoken through it even often we'll catch up literally sometimes we'll just be talking about the same shit that we did last time yeah. but it's helping just reinforce it reinforce those pathways and yeah you know those ideas and you know going back and forth on things that are starting to land mm. um and you know it, yeah it, re it really helps yeah yeah and that's it we will rock up and have absolutely fucking no no clue we're about to talk about <laughs> but yeah. that's the beauty of it is because you see the transfer or the crossover in everything yeah yeah, it's not like this mindset shift only improves your footy or uh, allows you to make more money or whatever it mm. is. It's like this this plays out in your relationships. It yep. plays out in in absolutely everything, and you can start to see that crossover effect. And yeah. I think, you know, as you said, we'll, we'll sometimes catch up, and it's literally just analyzing uh, a blow up with the missus or or like a, a reaction to a to a losing a client at work or something like that. And yep. you just start to dissect it. That's it. And yeah, it's it's a fucking powerful thing, isn't it? No doubt. Yeah. What um mate, you obviously do a a lot of bloody great work with your with your little mate H. Um fill us in with what that last kind of twelve months has been like and um and the development of your relationship as well. Nice. Yeah, little H man. Now I've had this had this awesome little relationship with with harrison and and i met him when he was five little bombers man um little backstories on the ambassador for the scleroderma foundation which mm. is an autoimmune disease my grandmother passed away from it so um the you know the the path there was to become the ambassador for the foundation which i'm you know super grateful for and then harrison is the youngest person in the world that we know of to be diagnosed with with the condition when he was five um and yeah, and then just he, through being a Bombers fan, got to link up, meet him out at the club and just fostered this awesome little relationship over the last six or so years. He's 11 now um, and just a little weapon. But, you know, the, the things that I see him go through on a day-to-day -day basis um, really put my life into, into perspective. Um, but just his charisma, his character, his energy, um, and his love that he has to give as an 11-year-old is incredible. Um, so I get so much joy out of ca every time I catch up with him. Um, we just chew the fat on the phone and stuff as well, which is cool. Um, but yeah, we've, we've sort of developed our, um, our relationship and um, you know, some cool little opportunities coming mm. off the back of that as well. And um, I, you know, I've been talking to you a lot about it, but uh, H loves his drawings and artworks and things like that. And um, Kate and I um, decided that it'd be wicked to make a clothing label um, and use H's graphics and designs as the, sorry, his drawings and, and artworks as the designs and the, the graphics on the garments. Mm. Um, so being go going down the track of that process has been unreal. Yeah. You know, H has drawn the label, like everything from start to finish. It's all his, you know, That's hand unbelievable. handwritten little slogans that he says that'll go on some of the hoodies and tees and the works um, and, and some of his drawings that have, um, you know, been docked up from our our mate who's a creative designer and um yeah it's been it's been unreal such a good learning process and h is rolling around telling everyone he's got his own merch coming out <laughs> work, so. that's awesome um, man yeah it's wicked and um and part of that will be you know i've i've always been like okay how can i 
have more of an impact on this kid's life. I just want him to live the most fulfilling life possible. And so I got him to write a bucket list of stuff he wants to do. Yeah. Um, and it's a pisser. Some of the stuff on there is a classic, but um, so got any, he, got any examples for us? Oh, what have you got? Like he loves his soccer. So he wants to, he wants to go to EPL game. He wants to meet Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, mm-hmm. drive a Lamborghini, sing a song with Ed Sheeran, um, swim with whale sharks. <laughs> What else? You got a heap of random stuff. He's not stuff, going for any low, no, low hanging hard. fruit, is he? He's yeah. going bang, so, yeah. <laughs> which I love. And That's it's, awesome. So part of the uh, the idea will be um, the proceeds that will come in from that. Uh, a lot of it will go towards helping H just live mm. this, this wicked life and hopefully in turn people that wear the kit um, feel inspired to live their most fulfilling life as well. So it'd be, um, it's been a pretty fun journey, but uh, yeah, still cracking on with that. Unbelievable, yeah. Well, whenever that whenever that um, goes live, we'll, we'll make sure we come back and add the any links and everything into the show notes for you guys to go and access any of that stuff because that's fucking incredible. You've obviously been filling me in about it, but I think um, you know it's it's such a as you said, such a cool experience for you. But at the same time, it just goes to show fucking how good of a person you are as well and the impact you're having on him. But that must be that must be a really cool thing. You know, whether it be H or whether it be just, you know, a kid who's at the game who gets to shake your hand or get a photo with you or whatever, it must be, and I'm sure it's easier now um, after this many years in the AFL for you to have the perspective, but it must be cool to see and actually think to yourself, fuck, it took me two seconds to grab a photo with, with this kid or whoever it is, knowing that that's going to be a moment that they fucking think about or, or talk about for probably the rest of their life yeah man it is like i'm just i'm so grateful to be in a position to be able to do that um it's one of the the best things about the gig is being able to make someone's day just from a a, one of the smallest actions you know to take a photo or sign an autograph or dish off a pair of boots or whatever it may be and i think since doing a lot of the inner work and getting to a space where um you know i I guess just in, in a really good space is just I've got a lot more fulfillment out of those moments as well. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of every time I'm I'm there now, either with a kid having a kick on the oval or um, having a yarn over the fence or whatever it may be, I'm, I'm present and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to really just, you know, feel into those moments of like how, how sick is this, you know, and just feel the, the energy off the kids as well. They're like mm. just loving it because like, I think back to when I was a kid and just I used to just froth it if I ever met an AFL player, let alone a senior footballer at Lane Gaffa. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so it was, um, it, it, it is awesome. And, and those moments that you do, that I do get to share and um, help brighten someone's day or whatever it may be is, you know, the best part of the job. Yeah. Yeah. That's unreal, man. And so, how are you? How's the rig feeling at the moment? Um, what are we? Just uh, December first today. So, how's yeah. the how's the body feeling at the moment for this stage of? I guess you'd be just started back pre-season with the club. Um, how's the body feeling? And how's the headspace coming into the season in two thousand twenty-four? And how are you feeling about the list and everything? Yeah, love it, man. No, body's body's going really well. Uh, we uh, a couple of weeks back, one of the early sessions did cop a kick to the shin, split her open. <laughs> got the stitches in there. A week later, got the stitches out. Got kicked again in the same spot. So stitches went straight back in <laughs> after training, which was yesterday. Um, but apart- oh, it happened yesterday. <laughs> it happened yesterday. Yeah. But anyway, apart from that, I'm cherry, mate. The body's going really well, um, and and probably even in a in a better frame of mind than I than I ever have been really. So. Mm. Um, yeah, things are swimming along pretty nicely. Um, yeah, excited. We had the draft a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. We've got nine new faces in the door through the trade period in the draft. So um, she's a different look around the club. But um, Is that, that's a pretty high amount. Yeah, no doubt. Years? Yeah, your turnovers usually maybe five or six. So yeah, it's okay. a, up there. But um, yeah, exciting. Really exciting. And, uh, you know, it's sort of everyone's flying this time of year. Every yeah. club's in the same boat. So it's yeah. back to square one. Um, which is the best part about it. And I think the comp- competition these days is just so close. Mm. So it's, you know, how can we get those little increments and improve bit by bit to try and, uh, you know, bridge that gap from, from yeah. uh, climbing up the ladder? Yeah, bloody oath, man. Exciting times, brother. Well, um, mate, I appreciate you coming in today. And um, as I've said numerous times, uh, I bloody love that we've been able to um, connect a lot over the last 12 months. It's been awesome to see how much, um, has transformed for you and I'm fucking excited for, for next season to come around um, and see you tear it up next year and also for the uh, the project with H to come out. Um, yourself and Kate have done an awesome job on that but uh, appreciate you coming in, man. I feel like 
the episode today, I feel like a lot of people are going to take a lot of value from it and it'd be just a, a really, really cool insight to, to hear it, you know, from someone like yourself who is genuinely experiencing it, but um, in the best way possible. And as you and I have talked about, the more the more people can actually start to share and talk about these experiences in a, in a normal way. Whereas in the past, you'd think about, you know, meditation or frequency yeah. stuff and you're kind of like a bit iffy about what it is. But I think, you know, when you can practically start to understand how great, as you said at the start of the chat, how great your life can be every single day for no fucking reason whatsoever. It's pretty exciting. No doubt, man. It is. It can be hard to articulate at times. And I don't know, I've probably dribbled a lot of that out. But no, it's been um, good. hopefully it lands for, for, if it lands for one person, then great. But um, yeah, it's, I think it, it is just definitely worth the inner work. It's absolutely worth it. You know, that feeling that you can get. But yeah, um, yeah and I really appreciate you having me on, brother. Grateful for our pr friendship and, and proud of what you're doing too, mate. So. Love appreciate work. that a lot man uh and thank you to everyone who has tuned into this episode today if you've enjoyed it we'd love for you to share this with a friend either send them the link or grab a screenshot of this episode and share it on your social media if you're listening on spotify at the moment p please feel free to leave a, a comment on this episode about what you thought of this chat with dice uh we're going to start featuring a few of those comments and a few shout outs to people who are leaving some reviews on the podcast each week uh, but I appreciate every single one of you and I'm looking forward to chatting to you guys again in next week's episode of the Fitness Lifestyle Podcast.